Here's a thought bite for you. What if optimism is really a bad thing, just like pessimism? And realism? That's just a smug slam on the other two. I'm an optimist. I'm a pessimist. Pfft. I'm a realist. Get out. Here I'm going to use the example of climate change, because that's when this first occurred to me. While I was working frantically on my book about how to make a decision about climate change, a neighbor of mine sent me an email with the subject line, Inspiration for your book. It was this quote from D. Hawk, the founder of Visa. Things are far too late and far too bad for pessimism. I suppose my neighbor meant it to help my mental state, so I wouldn't go striding around with a frown on my face quite so much. But it had quite the opposite effect on me. I felt uncomfortable, then scared, then confused and agitated as to why I felt uncomfortable and scared. It was like an everlasting gobstopper of negative feelings. Yum. It took me a while to put my finger on it, but I eventually figured out why it disturbed me so. We always consider optimism to be a positive trait, admirable. But it can be a tremendously harmful thing because it checks the urge to go all out. It hamstrings you. By feeling that things will work out, you are demotivated because, well, things will work out. But pessimism does the same thing. By thinking there's no way it will work out, you are also demotivated. I mean, why work for something when you already know you're going to lose? Both optimism and pessimism seem to be a throwing up of hands, surrendering to the whims of fate. And that is not what we need right now. What we need is to realize that whether things work out or not depends on the choices and effort we put in right now. When I think about these things, the image that invariably pops into my head is from that World War II poster of Rosie the Riveter. Remember that? The individual citizen rolling up her sleeves to answer the call of duty, to do whatever is necessary to preserve the world she loves. That is the embodiment of the mindset we need right now, but we don't have a name for that attitude. It's neither optimism nor pessimism, nor the bastard child of realism. I think we should be able to refer to it easily, just like with optimism and pessimism, but I just can't come up with a name that rolls off the tongue. Hmm, optimism, pessimism, rosyism. As in, I'm a rosiest. I know the term rosiest doesn't really just roll off the tongue, but every time I get disheartened and feel like just giving up, I think of that poster of Rosie staring out at me, rolling up her sleeves despite the odds, and I rouse myself to continue plugging on. How can I just roll over in despair when Rosie's out there working her ass off for me? I even came up with a handy little table which I put in my book to contrast the attitudes of optimism, pessimism, and Rosieism. When faced with the classic, hey, look at this glass of water test, the pessimist says, the glass is half empty. The optimist says, the glass is half full. And the rosiest says, Enough philosophizing. Let's go get some more damn water. When faced with the question of, can we do it? The pessimist says, give up. It'll never get done. The optimist says, relax. It'll get done. And the rosiest says, let's get to it. When faced with an overwhelming situation, the pessimist says, we're doomed. The optimist says, everything's going to be fine. And the rosiest says, work like hell. And when asked, what are the odds of succeeding? The pessimist says, it's impossible. The optimist says, where there's a will, there's a way. And the rosiest says, I'd like to know what you think about this idea of rosyism and its contrast to optimism and pessimism, especially whether you can come up with a better name than rosyism. So chip into the comments. Maybe together we can come up with a better term and even a better idea. As always, feel free to forward this video to others and ask them to come back and contribute. The more brains on the problem, the better. For now, this is Greg Craven. Just thinking.